I'm Georgia and this is The Sound of Georgia. Today I'm just going to be doing something quick and fun and random. I'm just going to be telling you a whole bunch of Julie Andrews movie trivia facts as quickly as I can. So I've got 15 Julie Andrews movie facts here. They're not going to be in any sort of particular order. Though for the movies I have multiple trivia facts on, they will be bunched together. But it's not like we're going chronologically or anything. And none of them are sound of music. I'll also mention before we get started that while these trivia facts are about Julie's movies, they are not all necessarily about Julie herself. So let's just get started. Okay, so the first one's about Darling Lily, and it's one of my personal favourites. The opening scene to Darling Lily was filmed in one take. Not on the first take, but in one singular take. Every time she messed up singing Whistling Away the Dark, they had to start over from the beginning of the song. The Americanization of Emily was the only movie Julie made that was intentionally shot in black and white. They did at one point release Americanization of Emily in colour, I think they sort of painted over the top of it, but it was filmed in black and white intentionally. So the next few I've got are from Princess Diaries, which is actually interesting if you know how I feel about that movie. But the first is that it was the first Disney movie Julie made since she made Mary Poppins. 37 years earlier. If you've read the actual original book series, Princess Diaries, which I haven't, but I have heard that Mia's dad is actually alive in the books. The reason they killed him off for the movie was because of Julie. I don't know how big a role the grandma is in the actual book series, as I said I haven't read it, but I heard that they wanted to give her a bigger role and sort of have her do more of what the dad did in the books, I guess. Apparently they rang Meg Cabot about it and said, okay, we want to kill her father because we got Julie Andrews for the role of the grandmother. And she apparently went, that's all right, kill him. Kill him off, we've got Julie. The two little girls Mia signs autographs for at one point in the movie were played by Gary Marshall's granddaughters. And Gary Marshall's daughter Kathleen plays Charlotte. In Princess Diaries 2, that is really Julie sliding down on the mattress. She did most of her own stunts. I don't know whether she did the Ring of Fire at the end of Star, which is why I say most of. Speaking of Star, in the movie Noel Coward is played by Noel Coward's real-life godson, Daniel Massey. And when Richard Aldrich, Gertrude Lawrence's husband, came to the set and saw Richard Krenner, who was playing him, he apparently said, nice to meet me. So let's talk a bit about That's Life. That's Life was the final movie Julie made that was directed by her husband Blake Edwards. It was filmed at their house. Jack Lemmon was the leading man in the movie and Jack Lemmon's son played the son. Julie's daughter Emma and Blake's daughter Jennifer played the daughters. The whole thing was basically a home movie with a budget. Julie even says in her words that Blake was telling Jack Lemmon to be Blake. In the film, Julie plays a singer who's waiting for the results of her recent throat operation. And the movie opens with her in an operating theatre. And that's pretty hard to watch given what happened 11 years later with Julie's throat operation. On to the early modern Millie, which exists solely because the boyfriend wasn't able to be turned into a film. At least not at that point in time. In 1999 or 2000, when Julie was filming Relative Values, the cast went off to watch an eclipse that was happening. More people ended up watching Julie, which I can't blame them for at all. I mean, eclipses might not be super common, but there will be another eclipse, even if you might personally not get to see another eclipse or only see one more eclipse, there will be many, many more eclipses. There is only one Julie Andrews and there will only ever be one Julie Andrews. And my final couple facts are for Victor Victoria. The dress that Robert Preston wears in the final scene of the film where he's singing The Shady Dame from Seville is the exact same dress Julie wears when she sings it earlier in the movie. It was made to fit him and then they pinned it back so she could fit into it. And Robert Preston also did that final scene in one take apparently. And that's all the facts I've got for this video and all I've got for today guys. I hope you enjoyed. I could make plenty more of these. There are dozens of other facts about Julie's movies that I could jump on. 
So if you enjoyed this and want to see more, let me know. Until then, stay safe guys. I hope you're all doing well. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my video next week. So long, bye bye.